Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm back with something a little different than my usual content. We're doing the rise and the fall of My Hair Academia, a quick overview. This is a change from my usual content, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop doing blogging, journaling, and pen palling. And anyways, My Hair Academia isn't my favorite anime, but it was definitely up there at some point. I started watching it a few years ago, so I was like way late to the, to the party. I remember it being the show that got me in the anime, like that, that was it. Don't know why, it just was. But anyway, even if you're not in the anime, I hope that you'll stay and hear me out. Or just listen to me talk about this, because it's also like the evolution of a show. Could be any show, just ignore the fact that it's anime if you hate anime. Let's get into it. Just a quick note before we get started, I'm not a professional in animation, writing, acting, or any related field. I'm just a viewer sharing my thoughts and opinions on the animes we all know and love. Or hate. Who knows? Feel free to disagree with me in the comments below, I welcome different perspectives. Also, please be aware that there will be spoilers in this video. I'm gonna say that one more time, so nobody can get mad at me, there will be spoilers. Okay, now let's actually get into it. My Hero Academia premiered in April 2016. From the very first episode, it captured everyone's hearts. We were introduced to a world where everyone had these superpowers known as quirks. Well, everyone except our main character, Izuku Midoriya. Midoriya? Midoriya. I just call him Deku, because that's what his superhero name is. Deku's journey resonated with many people, because like, it's a classic underdog story. Who doesn't love that? There was so much room for growth, and we felt every single struggle that he felt. And it was what made the show so good. Relatable, emotional, and successfully drew us in. Early seasons introduced a rich cast of characters such as Todoroki, Kirishima, and Iya, each with their own backstories and arcs that made us invest emotionally into their journeys. The deep dives in the characters' lives were some of my favorite episodes. We learned about Todoroki's family struggles and Kirishima's quest for heroism, adding layers to the narrative and making the show much more fascinating instead of just, this guy's so weak, now he's not. Instead we got, this, these, they suffered. This is how they grew from that and it was what we loved. By 2017, My Hero Academia had become a cultural phenomenon. Fans were discussing their theories online, making <sighs> fan art, and writing fan fiction. <laughs> fan fiction. <laughs> for countless memes and edits celebrating these iconic moments that we've all come to know and love. The show expanded its universe with merchandise, manga spin-off, manga, manga, <gasps> with manga spin- How do you say it? Manga, manga, right? Whatever spin-offs, including a feature film My Hero Academia Two Heroes, released in August 2018, which solidified its place in the anime community. The themes of friendship, perseverance, and heroism really stood out in those early seasons. Like the sports festival arc and the UA training camp arc showcased the characters' growth and camaraderie. The emotional weight in these arcs combined with stunning, stunning animation and gripping storytelling created a perfect storm that just captured the hearts of all the viewers. I feel like I've said that a bunch of times, but it really, it really did. In terms of accolades, My Hero Academia did not, did not go unnoticed. It received multiple awards, including the Tokyo Anime Awards in 2017 and nominations for the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, further cementing its status as a top tier anime. So, you know, it's doing awesome. It's great, award after award after award, movie, movie, merchandise, merchandise. It's doing great. That is, until, Somewhere along the way, something changed. As the show progressed into seasons four and five, the character-driven na narratives that, have, that initially captured our hearts kind of took a backseat, like me, when I have to ride with my siblings. I'm not allowed to have shotgun. The deep dives into characters' lives, like Todoroki, which I might add, we do see a lot of him in Endeavor, a lot, like a lot. It's like all the other characters were no longer important. It was just, just Todoroki, but Kirishima, like all of them, most of them got cut short. Instead of fleshing it out, the focus just shifted to Deku, often leaving the side stories rushed or ignored. I mean, valid Deku is the MC, but where, oh where, would the fandom be without Bakugo? I mean, come on, are you, are you for real right now? <laughs> anyway. Now, I want to know that this is mostly a quicker overview of My Hero Academia. <laughs> kind of like how they handled the, the arcs and the character development of the side characters. <laughs> There's definitely more to unpack here, so if you want more, just let me know and I'll make a part two. I already made a script for it. But if you don't want it, I won't do it. I will cry though. In the beginning, his journey felt so meaningful because of all the struggles he faced. But as the series went on, he went from being this kid who could barely throw a punch without breaking his arm to like this, this crazy character who could move at the speed of light. 
got ridiculously strong way too fast. It takes away the struggle we love to see him overcome, not in like a sadistic, oh yeah, he's in pain way, but just like a wow, he's working hard, this is awesome. You know? It's like they got so focused on making him the ultimate hero that they just forgot that we liked seeing the journey along the way. They just, it was just weird, I don't know. Then, a big part of the decline, the fan base. Now, hear me out. Not all of them are like this, not the whole community, not everyone, because I like the show. However, I don't go around being like, I love My Hero Academia, it's my favorite show, due to the fan base, I don't want to be associated with them. There's no denying that that community can get a little bit weird, to say the least. I've seen questionable shipping wars, and even debates that are really, really heated for no reason. And this kind of energy can really put off new fans. Not only that, but you've seen countless memes and videos like, oh, the My Hero fans, and it's just so cringy. You don't want to be, a, you don't want to watch a show where you think everyone is like that, including the ch characters in the show. Yeah, Deku cries a lot. He's he's weird at the beginning, but like, come on now, come on now. By the time we reached season six, many fans felt that the content just declined. The pacing fell off with rushed plots that didn't allow for meaningful character exploration. Paranormal Liberation War arc had epic moments, yeah, but it also felt crammed and chaotic leaving some viewers overwhelmed with everything we just got. Some viewers, AKA me. Me, what happened in that arc? I have no idea. And he began to feel the story was just losing its magic. Me. By the time, this is not in the script, but I just finished season seven after I wrote this script. It was like they were starting to tell me about characters. We, they did not have a, like seven lines in all the seasons combined. What happened there? All of a sudden they're trying to make me care about these characters who we haven't known at all? That's weird. How do you expect me to care about, like, what? That's just weird. I don't know. Critics and fans started voicing their concerns more prominently and much more commonly. While My Hero Academia still garnered nominations from their fan base that is very powerful and still there, but the other ones just kind of like went away. They're, they're still getting their stuff, you know? The enthusiasm from like everyone just started to dwindle. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love my hero. Closetedly. Closetedly? Secretly. Brought us incredible moments and some, I mean, hey, I, I've cri I cried watching it, you know? Not like every episode like Deku. <laughs> but I still like it, like I promise you, like I'm not just a hater. And it was my first anime that really got me into anime. It's the reason that I like, that I have these guys on my wall. That it's the reason. So, I mean, I, I mean special place in my heart series had kept that original pacing and continued to leave some focus for the characters we care about, not just speedrunning Deku's path to being the next All Might, then it would have stayed on the rise, as opposed to rise, fall, rise, fall, 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 rise, fall. You know, My Hero, great start, but somewhere along the line it just lost its spark. Unless it figures out how to get back to those roots, it might just keep spiraling downward. Who knows what will happen in season 8, are we gonna suddenly have a character that we had no idea was even there and then all of a sudden they're gonna make us try to cry about them? What happened to the characters we were rooting for and knew and were actually like important and now we're literally nothing? They're gonna give me more info on them and then I'm supposed to be like, I don't care anymore. I guess we'll have to see where the series goes next. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did my hair academia fall off for you too or am I just being a hater? Let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching, I love y'all. I'll catch you in the next one, bye.